So in the series of corrosion control and protection methods, today I am going to discuss about different types of coatings. Hi, I am Neha and I hope you remember in the previous video of mine, I have discussed how proper designing can help us to restrict certain corrosion advantages over the previous one. If certain designs are there that are more prone to corrosion, but you properly design them, then you can conquer, you can protect the overall corrosion. Now today what I'm going to tell you would be the coatings and one of its kind is anodic coatings. Now here what you have to remember is that if it is anodic coating that means it is made up of a coating metal which is anodic to your base metal right. So now let's say if your metal is iron or steel then you have to coat it with a metal which is anodic to it. Say for example, the coating of zinc, aluminium or cadmium on steel is anodic. I hope you remember the galvanic series and the electrochemical series which I have discussed earlier. Based on those series only, you will be able to understand which metal is going to behave as anode. The metal higher in the series would be active, so it would act as anode and metal lower in the series would be noble and it will act as cathode. So what you have to do here in order to protect your base metal, just coat it with a metal which is anodic to your base metal. That means if the cell is formed somehow, that means you have an anodic portion, uh, sorry, now it will behave, behave as a cathode because you have made one coating which is anode. And then you have a uh, electrolyte, a corrosive environment is there. That means you have cathode, you have anode and you have an electrolyte. Then there is a chance of making a wet corrosion or any type of corrosion. So uh, imagine if it occurs, then what will happen? The coating will get corroded, right? Because the coating is anode. And at the end, your metal will be saved, will be saved from the overall corrosion. That's how this method is equally important. Also. If this uh, crack, uh, there is a crack develops in this coating, let's say this is a node, but then there is a crack which is developed here. Even then, your metal would remain safe. Why? Because that is a cathode and this is a anode. So, even if the coating develops a crack, then also your metal will remain safe because you have coated it with a metal which is anodic to your base metal. So, I hope this is clear. First uh, step is to coat it with an anodic metal. Second step is when the coating could be cathodic to your base metal. That means now your metal is anode. Uh -huh. They are metal is anode. This is the difference, right? Earlier it was cathode. And your coating here is of cathode. That means if you have anode, you have cathode and you have electrolyte, then there is development of cell and the corrosion occurs at anode. But now, right now, what you have done, you have coated it with a cathode. So, your anode is saved. But this kind of coating is actually dangerous because what happens is, if there is certain crack or a pore developed in this cathodic coating, then what will happen? Then, a localized intense corrosion can occur. There will be small anodic area and there will be large cathodic area. And earlier also I told you when the cathodic area is large, then the demand of electron would be more and the demand has to be supplied by the anodic material. That means more oxidation will occur. So intense corrosion will occur at your anodic area. So small anode and large cathode area is obviously a dangerous combination and that should not be applied. So in this type of coating, you have to coat it with a more noble metal. In the previous coating, you have to coat it with more active metal. And let us go ahead with the next coating. This coating is neither anode or cathodic type. It is basically uh, a chemical or electrochemical reaction with the base metal. So you have to coat certain organic materials and then what happens they get converted into a material which is quite safer and that uh, is stable and it does not undergo the corrosion. Normally coatings are thick or thin depending on the thickness. Coming to like this one is one more like example of chemical conversion coating you know uh, plate the particular uh, metal with another metal so that uh, on reaction it converts into a stable metal and then uh, you have uh, 
specific organic coatings and linings so as an alternative to those materials organic polymers can also be used for the coatings uh, they do provide very good advantages certain times they are very good uh, resistant to corrosion and water and air uh, variation to ph also and they are stable with respect to the chemical and physical environment now it depends on like if the coating is thick like thicker than 0.4 you will call it as a coating well like if it is thicker uh, thinner than then coating and if it is thicker than lining and it goes uh, in a reverse order if the rate is less than 1 mm you call it as a coating if the rate is greater then you call it as a lining so if it's less than 0.4 mm it is a coating but if it is thicker than that it is a lining then you have one more options in coating like ceramic materials or uh, ceramic coatings are done ceramic are basically oxides mixture of metal oxides and that can be sprayed on your material then you have a glass linings you have a porcelain uh, linings that can also be done so what uh, we have discussed so far is that protective coating is one of the method by which you can protect your material in cathodic coating uh, the material Uh, would be cathodic to your base metal in anodic coating your material would be anodic to the base metal i hope you remember cathodic and anodic difference now can you tell me based on that that uh, the galvanizing is uh, preferred over tinning or tinning is preferred uh, just mention it in the comments that uh, galvanizing is better or tinning is better that means coating with zinc is better or coating with tin is better uh, i can just give you a uh, tip that one of them is a cathodic coating and one of them is anodic coating please mention in the comments if you are able to understand this tell me which one is preferred galvanizing or tinning right and then there are other coatings like chemical conversion coating wherein the entire base material uh, react with that and convert into a stable coating then you have organic metals used then in that case you call it as organic coatings and linings and sometimes you have ceramics also to be used so i hope you are able to understand today's uh, topic was just the coatings in order to protect it from corrosion if you have understood the material please hit like that will give me motivation and please do subscribe for more such videos thank you